everyone. Well, I've heard it said that you can't go into La Paz for just a day or two. It always turns into a stay of at least a week. And we are living proof that there is something to that adage. Our planned marina stay of 18 days to encompass the visit of our daughter Beverly's, um, to encompass the time that our daughter Beverly would visit actually turned into more than that. It was cheaper economically wise to pay for a month than to pay the, the rate for 18 days. So since we were there, why not enjoy the facilities and the city for a month? We found it was very difficult to tear ourselves away from La Paz. There are many compelling reasons. One is the cruiser social scene, which is facilitated by Club Cruceros, located at Marina La Paz. We have joined the club. It's $10 per person per year. And during the morning coffee hour, it's great to run into acquaintances from the yard or from San Carlos and to make new friends. The club sponsors the morning cruiser net. Swaps and trades, swaps and trades, go ahead. Carby. And many activities, including Christmas and New Year's Eve potlucks. This month, January, a couple of fundraising events are the charity beach party and a just for fun fashion show. Funds raised go to local organizations, some of which support education and elder care. Additionally, the club is a great resource for help in locating virtually anything a cruiser might require. La Paz has several marinas all of which charge Southern California Marina prices. We elected to stay at Marina Costa Baja, which is part of a resort and located at the entrance to the La Paz Channel. Costa Baja was the only marina that had 35 foot slips available when I made reservations. All the other marinas would have charged us at the 40 foot slip rate. In the outer basin are the large yachts and access to the inner basin where we were located is made through a narrow channel. To me, it appeared the inner basin afforded the best protection of all the marinas. And if I were leaving a boat on the water in La Paz during the summer hurricane season, I would choose Costa Baja. While the marina is located six miles outside of town and we were not in the middle of things, the complimentary shuttles, clean facilities, restaurants, gym and spa, and having snacks and drinks at the pool were delightful. Food. La Paz has many good restaurants and we, of course, had to make a thorough sampling. While La Paz is a tourist town for both gringos and Mexicans alike, restaurant prices are about half the cost of eating in restaurants in the U.S., although not as cheap as eating in restaurants in Wymas. By and large, we found La Paz to be a clean, pleasant, and safe city with pleasing homes, murals, and interesting pavements. The inhabitants are friendly and helpful. There are two municipal markets, of which Nicholas Bravo is my favorite. Both Beverly and I became addicted to the empanadas we could find at one of the loncherias there. One of the pleasures of La Paz is walking the Malacón. Most Mexican seaside cities have a Malacón, but the one in La Paz is special with its many sculptures that depict the city's connection with the sea. This sculpture is of Jacques Cousteau, who described the La Paz area as the aquarium of the world. And this particular sculpture 
for some reason, appeals to me. The Malacone is enjoyed by tourists and residents alike and is about two and a half miles long. I am pleased to say that we have walked all of it, some portions of it, multiple times. The Club Cruceros sponsored Christmas boat light parade packed the Malacone and we opted to watch from a distance. The Malacone has a dedicated bike lane and is wide enough to accommodate skaters as well. Here, Beverly is enjoying roller skating at the reasonable skate rental rate of $1.50 per hour. While we mainly took it easy during our stay, we did accomplish a few projects. Lee did the annual servicing of the windlass and found it needed about a tablespoon of oil. He also swapped the ends of our anchor chain. The end of our 200 foot anchor chain that would normally drag on the sea bottom when we were anchored is now the part that remains in the anchor locker. And the end that had less wear and tear on it is now attached to the anchor tank. Beverly pitched in and painted the starboard bow scroll work. However, Lee was the busy one. He also fixed two non-working burners on the stove. In both cases, he cleaned and sanded the thermocoupler and added new washers. I cleaned accumulated grime and now we have a stove that is shiny and all the burners work. We had a rental car over New Year's so that on the 2nd we could take Beverly to the San Jose del Cabo airport to catch her flight back to the U.S. For our New Year's Day trip we visited the gold and silver mining town of El Triunfo, a town who in its heyday in the mid to late 1800s had a population of 10,000. Before returning the car, we made a major provisioning trip to Ley, and the day before leaving the marina, we shopped at Chirarawi, my new favorite Mexican supermarket, for fresh meat, fruit, and vegetables, as well as our favorite Mexican cheese, a smoked provolone. Christmas is over, and it's time to head out. Unfortunately, we will be missing the beach party and seeing our friend Steve from Pablo traipse down the runway at the fashion show. In our next episode, join us as we learn there is more to cruising than just getting the boat and leaving the dock. So until then, 